Hey guys, let's look at the employee-employer uh, model that we're used to and then let's look at it through a different lens. So right now, if somebody is looking for a job, and, and I'm going to talk specifically to new grads, if you're graduating in the next six months, 12 months, you know that you're going to need a job when you graduate if you want to go that route, if you're not looking to go into business directly out of school. So there's two ways to look at this situation. The conventional way, the way most new grads and, and unemployed therapists are looking at it is they have a problem, they need employment. The employer holds the solution to their problem, which is a paycheck. But I'm going to tell you, you can look at this in, in a different way. You can flip the tables a little bit and you can say, well, what if the employer is the one that has the problem? What if the employer is the one that has referrals, has patients that need treatment, but doesn't have clinical staff? Well, I, as the eventual employee, have the solution to that problem. And so when I'm walking into a job interview, when I'm considering taking a position for a specific employer, I can either go in with the mindset of they're providing me a solution, they're in control, the employer's in control, giving me pay for my time, or I could look at it as I'm delivering them a solution. Without me, they have no patient care they can't deliver the service that they need. They're not gonna make money and they're gonna go out of business. They need me more than I need them. Now, of course, we don't want an adversarial relationship. We don't wanna walk into this as them versus us, which usually seems to be the case. We wanna approach this as how can we create a mutually beneficial relationship? In fact, I would even say, how can we make this relationship disproportionately in, in beneficial to each one of us. How do I, as the employee, get more out of the relationship than I give? How does the employer get more out of the relationship than they give? How do we make this work in both of our favor? And that's where I think it takes a little bit of creativity, takes a little bit of understanding each individual role and the responsibility and what it is that we deliver and what it is the employer delivers. And you know, one way that I like to do that is say, what am I as the employee buying from the employer? Well, for the most part, I'm buying, I'm, I'm buying the ability to offload some risk. As the employee coming to this relationship, providing a solution to the employer, I'm giving up a percentage of the money that I generate, right? If, if I'm seeing a Medicare beneficiary and I'm generating on average $100 an hour, and I'm accepting 50 of those dollars as payment in full for my services. What is the other 50 going toward? What am I buying for that extra $50 profit margin that I'm not keeping? Well, I'm buying the idea that I don't have to go out and market for these patients. The employer is doing the marketing. I'm buying the fact that if I do something wrong, there's a second level of liability and risk mitigation. I'm buying the fact that if Medicare or any other third party payer comes back in the future to audit or review my notes, and maybe my notes aren't up to par, I'm not the one that's giving up my $50 compensation, but the employer is the one giving up $100 in revenue for a visit that was reversed and they're saying that the documentation didn't support medical necessity. So I'm, I'm also buying the fact that I'm getting paid now or in two weeks, whereas the employer is getting paid in three weeks or six weeks or however long it takes them to get the reimbursement from the insurance. I'm also buying the security to know that I'm going to get paid for that hour of time no matter what happens on the insurance side. Maybe there's a glitch in the system. Maybe the patient doesn't actually have the insurance they thought they had. We frequently see situations where patients have Medicare Advantage plans, but they come in with a red, white, and blue Medicare card and say, I have Medicare. It's not until weeks or months later in some situations where all of a sudden they realize, no, in fact, they don't have Medicare, they have Medicare Advantage, and worst case scenario, there's no out-of-network coverage and the provider is not contracted with that Medicare Advantage plan. So as the employee coming into this situation, the reason why I'm giving up or spending a certain amount of money for the, the 
compensation that I'm generating is because I'm buying the freedom of that risk and my employer is assuming that risk. The employer is assuming the risk for me. Now on the flip side, the employer has to receive adequate compensation, has to have a big enough profit margin on top of the services that I deliver and the cost of hiring me to solve the employer's problem. There has to be enough profit margin there. So if the employer is, you know, let's say a, again, Medicare reimbursement, hundred dollars for a typical follow-up visit and the employer is looking at hiring me at a rate of $50, or hiring another provider at a rate of $75 or hiring a third provider at a rate of $35. What is the decision-making process on the employer side? Well, for the $75 therapist, the employer's only got $25 to play with. And the question is, can, can that employer earn enough profit to assume all of the risks that I just said the employee is selling to the employer. You know, is $25 enough to handle all the administrative burden of submitting claims, collecting reimbursement, billing the patient if it comes to that, all of that stuff. Is the $25 worth the three or five or seven years worth of risk for audits or anything coming back to the employer for the services that were, that were delivered and potentially losing the reimbursement at 100%? Um, probably not, but if I look at the $50, uh, therapist and I look at the $35 therapist, we're talking about a $15 difference. And in that $15 an hour difference, y the employer has to make the determination. Well, is it worth paying an extra $15 per hour for individual A versus individual B? Um, is my profit going to be that much higher? hiring the lower cost therapist. If so, is my risk going to be any higher? Uh, yeah, any higher to hire the low cost therapist? Um, is the low cost therapist going to cause me to have more incomplete plans of care? Is my patient attendance rate going to go down if I hire the lower cost therapist? Um, these are major factors that are considered on the employer side. So you want to consider Okay, I'm coming to this as I'm a therapist with a solution to your problem, Mr. or Mrs. Employer. You need patient visits completed, I can deliver that. I also understand there's a component of risk that you're gonna be accepting on my behalf. We need to negotiate and determine what are the ultimate goals, what are the pain points for you, what are the solutions that I can deliver to you, and in exchange, what are the um, services and functionality that you're going to deliver to me if I come on as your employee? So lots of stuff to talk about, lots of things to think about. There is a ton of negotiation to happen there. Unfortunately, most of the negotiations that I've seen and been part of are very adversarial. It's very you against me. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna make an offer. I'm gonna wait for you to make an offer. Whatever your offer offer is, I'm gonna say it's too low. It's it's these old tactics that don't work in 2022 anymore. So hopefully there are employers watching this and employees watching this. Hopefully there are people out there that acknowledge the reality of we live in a very different time. These are very different business and economic um, situations we're dealing with. And the ultimate beneficial relationship for both parties comes through full transparent communication. Guys, let me know what you think. I know that some of these are some different concepts that aren't really being discussed these days, but my most important priority for you is to share new ideas, to give you different perspectives, in fact, if you want to see the next video recommended to you from YouTube, go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. If you want more content from my channel, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow to 10,000 this year. Uh, we're just past 3,300 right now. So I wish you the best. I'll catch you on the next video.